Um, all right, let's let's get into some of these other storylines that we have because we got about 10 minutes left in the show. Yeah. Um, LJ Cryer uh is heading to Houston. Yeah. Um, they look like they're reloading. Jamal Shedd's back, Terrence Arsenal is gonna be back. Uh Auburn, or I'm sorry, Arkansas has added Tremont Mark and Keon Menafield, two uh pretty impressive transfers. But I want to start with this. So Georgetown has landed Jaden Epps, like you mentioned. They landed Roman Brumball, like you mentioned, who you love and you're going to have as a first-team All-American next year. They yeah. added Dontre Styles. They are in the mix with a couple of other high-profile transfers. Um, compare the start that Ed Cooley has had at Georgetown to the start that Kim English has had at Providence, where he's brought back Bryce Hopkins. He's brought back Devin Carter. He's brought in Josh Aduro, and uh, he is also in the mix for a couple of high-profile transfers. I don't know if I'm allowed to say them right now, so I'm not going to say them. Um, who's had the better start to their tenure at the new program? Um, I would say here's here's the thing to me is obviously Kimmy English is in a better spot today because he's inherited a couple of all league guards or, or players, not guards, mm-hmm. um, Hopkins and Carter, and he's brought Adura with him and other players uh, from George Mason with him, Gaines. Uh, so I think Kimmy's in a great spot. And it's all about momentum, right? Like, I, I, I use this often. And, you know, when Nate Oates took over at, at Alabama, I really did not love the hire from it being outside the box. I was like, how is he going to get it done in, down in Alabama? He has no idea what he's getting himself into down the SEC. But he inherited some good players, if you remember. Like Herb Jones, mm-hmm. John Petty. Like, there was talent there. Avery J- Johnson just hadn't done enough with it. Um, Kim English walks into a great situation. Yeah, you know, Bryce Hopkins can't really go anywhere. He'd be a two-time transfer. And right now, as the NCAA has, has stated, uh, those two-time transfers, if you're not a grad transfer, you're not eligible right away. You have to sit a year. So that's the beauty of, honestly, what Kim English inherited right now. Those guys can't go anywhere. So he, he's got a really good top three right now in Providence. And if you keep this thing going and you're in a brutal league, um, you're going to get momentum. And momentum's everything early. Look at, again, Nate Oates in, in Alabama. Um, so I think Providence is in a better spot today. But as I say, Georgetown has the higher ceiling as a job. And I think uh, Ed Cooley will be in a better spot in a few years. It's just going to take him time because – it's a complete rebuild. I mean, he inherited a complete shit show with nobody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, when you get back two guys that are going to be pros, that are going to be juniors, that are upperclassmen, that have already won something in the Big East, right? Or, I'm sorry, that have already competed yeah. in the Big East to understand what it's going to be about. Like, I think Jaden Epps is a terrific player. I think Roland Brumbaugh has a chance to be really good. Um, I like what cool he's doing down there at Georgetown right now, especially like, and, and if they get Dickinson, which is like a big, if, uh, but if yeah, they that get would him, be then, huge, that was, yes. that'd be a seismic change for Georgetown. I would, I would still say that. I think that the start, I would, I would bet on Providence being better this yeah. year. Georgetown, they got four players. They still like, he's got to build a roster. Right. Providence already has a team. That's going to be anchored by two all league guys that like, I think both of them will play in the NBA, Devin Carter and, and Bryce Hopkins. Throwing a Duro, throwing the uh, what the the who's the point guard that transferred with him? I'm blanking on his name. Gaines, um, Gaines, yeah, Gaines. Uh, you got Jaden Pierre coming. I think Jaden Pierre is going to be terrific. Um, no, like I agree. I mean, the crazy part is Ed Cooley could put together a pretty good team this year, and they could still finish eighth in the Big East. <laughs> yeah, good. Like good luck in that conference, man. Right. Shit. Like um, I mean, go right. through like literally, and I know we only got a couple minutes here. But, like, if we go through the Big East right now, right? All right, so you got, you know, Marquette and UConn are are at the top right now. Creighton's, Probably one and two, yeah. Creighton's up there. Xavier needs to do a lot of work, but they're going to be there. They just the who they, they just added the uh, the kid from Western Kentucky, Davion McKnight, who's going right. to, like, he's going to be They're really going to get another player soon yep. in the portal. So, St. John's has Rick Pitino, by the way. They're, yep. they're going to be somewhere. In oh, that. Rick Pitino went to St. John's? Upper echelon, yes. Uh, Providence <laughs> is going to be better than Georgetown. Who am I forgetting yeah. about? Villanova. Villanova. Right? So that's seven right there. And, and the old, DePaul is at the bottom. 
Butler's towards the bottom. Who are we forgetting? One Seton more. Hall. Seton Hall, probably. Yeah, probably down there with 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 you know maybe a little bit above Butler and 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 DePaul right now. You know, what, right there with Georgetown. Either way, the point your point is made. Like yeah. Georgetown could be a team that's on the bubble, and they could also finish eighth place in the Big East. Like. Yep. <laughs> That's that's why this league Brutal. is going to be a bear. That's why this league is going to be awesome. Uh, all right. Let me tell you guys about our sponsor for today's episode, Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 a few weeks back. When we get in the middle of college hoop season, it can be hard for me to eat and drink as healthy as I probably should be, especially in late February and March when the schedule gets really busy. But I found that I felt better as I've made AG1 a part of my daily routine. I take AG1 in the afternoons after the coffee is worn off and once the itis post launch is kind of set in. And what I found, my energy levels are up. It's improved my digestion. And as a result, I'm not only more efficient and productive in the most important time of the year for me and for the field of 68, but I'm working out more consistently. I just feel better. AG1 is so much more than just a greens powder. It's comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally could not be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of the AG1 formula with water, and I drink it every single afternoon. Done. Just like that. I also like that it only costs $3 a day. The price is right. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is the answer. They are giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Free! Just go to athleticgreens.com backslash field 68. That's athleticgreens.com backslash field 68. The link is in the description below. Check it out. Support the field of 68 and feel better about yourself. 